What if I can't get English versions of our documents? Hi, I'm Jim Hacking, immigration lawyer practicing law throughout the United States out of our office here in St. Louis, Missouri. Jadnan has a question. Um, oh, and we have our office in San Diego. Don't forget about that. Jadnan wants to know, he's applying for a green card for his spouse. His spouse is from Russia and she has a Russian birth certificate. As you might imagine, it's in the Cyrillic alphabet in Russian and they don't have an English version. And I think that Adnan was asking, well, I can't get an English version from Russia uh, of the birth certificate. And that's completely normal. So don't worry about that, J. Adnan. What happens in that scenario is you just need to find someone who is fluent in Russian and English or whatever language it is. You need to find someone who's fluent in both languages. And then they need to uh, read over the Russian document or the foreign language document and translate it into English. Then at the bottom, they just need to say, my name is Jim Hacking. I am fluent in Russian and I am fluent in English. The following translation or the foregoing translation was true and correct to the best of my knowledge and then sign it and then get that notarized and that should be plenty good uh, for a translation. So you don't need to get a English version from the home country unless of course the home country's language is English then obviously it would be in English. But in a situation like this for Jay Adnan's wife, uh, she's not going to have to get an English version of her birth certificate from Russia. She's going to have to get someone in America. And it doesn't have to be a paid terms later. It can be a friend. Uh, it just can't be the petitioner or the beneficiary. So and it can't be the lawyer because I took Russian for seven years. I almost got a Russian major and said I got a Russian minor. And uh, I took Russian for a really long time, but I would not feel comfortable translating any legal documents. So you want to make sure it's someone who's highly competent, especially if you're using complex legal words. Um, this is true for any document, not just birth certificates. You're going to want to get someone. You might want to pay for a certified translator. That might be better, but you don't have to, as long as the person is fluent and is willing to swear under oath that the contents and the translations are true and correct to the best of their knowledge. That's really what you need to have, and that should uh, seal the deal. So Jadnan, you don't need to get an English version of that Russian um, birth certificate or any other documents. You just need to get a certified translation that it's a true and accurate copy. And again, it can't be your wife or anybody else related to you. It should be a disinterested person who um, is fluent in both languages. And that's really all that you need. So nothing to worry about there. And I hope this helped. If you have questions about translation of documents, and if you do have questions about documents themselves, one good thing is to always check the visa reciprocity table, R-E-C, I-P-R-O-C-I-T-Y, reciprocity table. If you Google visa reciprocity table and then click on your country, it'll tell you exactly what documents you need to have for that country when you're submitting them to USCIS. The State Department has gone through and determined and described each document that's available from each country. And so hopefully um, you can do that. And I'm sure with the Russian birth certificate, it's pretty straightforward. Then you just get that translated. And you, you do need to translate all everything that's on the page. So if there's like court names or agency names or Department of Vital Records or whatever, you're going to want to translate all that. Not Every single word on the page needs to be translated. So that's everything I need to know about translation of documents. If you have questions, give us a call at 314-961-8200. You can email us at info at hackinglawpractice.com. Be sure to join us in our Facebook group, which is called Immigrant Home. If you like this video, please be sure to share it out on social and to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And of course, every Tuesday and Thursday, usually around noon central time, I will be live in both those places, our Immigrant Home Facebook group and in the YouTube channel, answering as many questions as I can in one hour flat. So hopefully you can join us. Uh, and that's all I got for you today, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.